components and some other equipment that's down there when we have crew aboard. Now the test today will look a lot like a normal Falcon launch for the first minute and a half. We'll fly until Falcon 9 reaches a predetermined velocity. This will occur about 84 seconds into flight, and that happens at approximately 20 kilometers up. Once we reach the required velocity, Dragon will then trigger an escape. Now as a reminder, the ground is not commanding this abort. It's up to the onboard computers to determine when to trigger the launch escape and do all the functions afterward. Once Dragon does trigger the launch escape, the first event will be commanding Falcon 9 to shut down its nine Merlin engines. Now as Marie and I mentioned earlier, Dragon will then separate from the Falcon using its eight Super Draco engines firing for about eight seconds. That carries Dragon capsule with the trunk up and away from Falcon. Now once they finish firing the Super Dracos, we coast, we jettison the trunk at Apogee, we reorient the capsule to come back for entry into the Earth's atmosphere. We deploy about two minutes after Apogee, the drogue chutes, and about a minute after that, the four main parachutes will be released. Dragon will then splash down softly in the Atlantic Ocean, about 35 kilometers offshore. Now when Dragon separates, we no longer have that smooth aerodynamic shape on top of the rocket. So the supersonic Falcon is going to be exposed to strong aerodynamic forces in the upper atmosphere. So we expect those aerodynamic forces will cause Falcon to start to tumble. Our simulations show that the Falcon will likely break apart due to the tumbling, instead of having the destruct system triggered and destroying the rocket. So now again, this entire test will take less than 10 minutes from the time Falcon 9 lifts off until Dragon splashes down. But Marie, once we splash down, the work's not over yet. Right, it's just beginning for the recovery team. We have a lot of things happening very rapidly in that first 10 minutes, and the recovery operation takes quite a bit longer. It'll be similar to the pad abort test, uh, but we'll, it will happen slightly farther down range in the Atlantic Ocean. So after splashdown, recovery teams will already be standing by for range approval to enter and clear that hazardous area. And if all goes nominally, SpaceX could have fully recovered Dragon back onto its recovery ship approximately two hours after splashdown. Keep in mind though, if this were to happen during an actual flight with crew on board, rescuing them would be the number one objective, of course, and recovering Dragon would be a secondary operation. So if that were to happen, an elite military rescue team would deploy at a moment's notice. They're part of the U.S. Air Force's Detachment 3, or they have this really great nickname, the Guardian Angels, which is very appropriate. They would jump from military air aircraft. There's a photo of that happening there where they would deploy their own parachutes to gently reach the water. And from there, they would help the crew out of the capsule and then onto a life raft to wait for a larger ship. Now this is not just any life raft. There, it has a cover that they can put over the top to protect them from the elements. And it's also equipped with food, water, and medical supplies, enough to last for days if needed. This would be, of course, a worst case scenario. It's one that we don't expect to happen. But of course, what do we do when we're preparing to fly crew? We always plan for the worst. So this is something that NASA, SpaceX, and the Department of Defense have rehearsed together over and over so that we're ready for anything. And the SpaceX recovery team is also keeping an eye out for Falcon 9. As we mentioned earlier, Falcon 9 is expected to break up over the water. And we've got a dedicated team of SpaceX recovery personnel who will be staged and ready to begin recovering debris shortly after breakup. Well, the clock's kicking down rapidly. We're just over T minus two minutes and 14 seconds from liftoff. You've seen the crew access arm, it's back. That was retracted away from Dragon at T minus 42 minutes. A few minutes after that, Dragon launch escape system was armed just before we began loading propellant onto the Falcon 9. So if an unplanned situation arose right now, Dragon would perform an escape. Now currently the engines are chilled in for launch on the Falcon. The Dragon spacecraft is waiting for liftoff. We have retracted and you can see in the video the strongback is moved away just about two degrees in rapid readiness for liftoff. We have also finished loading liquid oxygen onto both the stages, so the Falcon 9 is just about ready. The large white cloud you see coming off of the side, we're venting down the pressure from the liquid oxygen supply lines in the strong back in preparation for launch. The last uh, event you're going to hear, start up at one minute when the computers take over and the launch director go at 30 seconds. 
and we're coming right up on that in about 15 seconds now will be just a minute from liftoff. And Falcon 9 is, as you just heard, is moving into those final stages of the final countdown for the in-flight abort test today. Um, so far, weather's looking okay. We're hoping it's gonna continue to cooperate and the range is green for launch. Now, if for some reason we scrub today, we will shift to our backup launch window, which is tomorrow at the same time. Again, this is just a test. We're fully expecting Falcon 9 to break up. So don't be alarmed if you see that happening live. And with that, let's listen in now. We're just 45 seconds from the final countdown. FTS is armed. Go for launch. Minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off. Simplify, aim high. Go Falcon, go Dragon. Vehicle is pitching down range. T plus 30 seconds, Falcon 9 with the Crew Dragon capsule is heading east from pad 39A. Everything looking good right now. As we get ready for max dynamic pressure, Stage we are now throttling down. down the first stage engines on Falcon, Falcon power 9. And telemetry nominal. Everything continues to look good. We're approaching the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle is supersonic and passing through maximum dynamic pressure. You've heard we're supersonic, we're through max Q. We're getting ready now to throttle the engines back up on the first stage. Stage one, throttle up. There's the call out. Okay, the major activity coming up in just over 10 seconds. Shut down and Dragon escape from the Falcon 9. Miko, Dragon launch escape initiated. Dragon's away. And you can hear some really loud uh, cheering in the room. Okay, you just saw a bright flash there. It looks like Falcon that may be Falcon 9 breaking up. We've got some loud cheers um, here in Hawthorne. The, the folks that just watched live the Dragon separate. The next milestone we have coming up at two minutes, 25 seconds, um, we're expecting to see the trunk jettison. So that claw that connects the trunk to the capsule is going to separate, allowing Dragon to uh, separate from the trunk. That's coming up in 15 seconds. And we do have the report, loss of telemetry from Falcon 9, first stage. And there you just saw the trunk jettison again. Some really loud cheers here in Hawthorne, California. This test is looking great so far. Nice view from the back of the Dragon capsule. We're also trying to see if we get the view there on the right-hand side from the aircraft that's orbiting the area. Now the Dragon control system is now going to be reorienting the capsule. We're at a high altitude where the aerodynamics are negligible. So we're going to use the small Draco thrusters on the Dragon capsule to reorient it, that gets it in a position with a heat shield down to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, and then later to deploy the drogue parachutes. Now those drogue chutes, we expect to uh, get confirmation that those have deployed at T plus four minutes and 48 seconds. So we've got just a little bit of breathing room before we hear that happen. Those parachutes are protected during ascent, on orbit, and re-entry by a panel that's up near the nose cone of the capsule. So we're gonna jettison the panel, then the mortars will fire to deploy those two drogue chutes. Again, that's coming up in just over a minute at T plus four minutes and 48 seconds.
Now those drogue shoots, when we see those come out, those will open, and those will come out before the main parachutes. That Those drogue parachutes are uh, what we use to begin to decelerate the Dragon capsule in preparation for splashdown. We understand we're getting into the drogue deploy envelope on the Dragon capsule. We expect that will happen when Dragon is at about 20,000 feet. About 15 seconds to drogue, drogue shoot deploy. And there they are. Drogue shoots are out. Again, some major cheering going on here as every stage of this test unfolds. Now we're going to be getting ready for the main shoots to deploy. Now main shoots will be coming up fairly quickly. There are four main parachutes. These are the newest Mark III parachutes. They're each 116 feet in diameter. We deploy them about two kilometers above sea level, 6,500 feet above the Atlantic Ocean. We're getting good views from the Dragon and the airplane, showing the two drogue chutes. Now we're just waiting for the main parachutes to be deployed very shortly. And we have the view from a different camera on Dragon showing the four main parachutes. Now they are deployed in a reefed condition. That means we're keeping them fairly shut to avoid shocks and now we're slowly opening up the four parachutes. Great views coming okay. off of the Dragon camera on the left, and we can also see the four parachutes from the airplane on the right. That is a really cool view. Nice view of the orange and white parachutes as they're opening up into the second position, and then going to fully open. From fully open, we'll be descending about 20 to 25 feet per second down to the Atlantic. So from that 6,500 foot altitude, it's going to take us a few minutes to splash down. Also right now, now that the mains are out, a sequence is performed on the Dragon, which will reorient the crew seats into a splashdown position, give them a little better angle to take the uh, slow bounce as we hit the ocean. Now, Maria, I talked about uh, the parachutes came out initially at a reef condition. That's fairly standard. They come out not fully open. That way, they're minimizing the shock on the parachutes. We're also minimizing the shock on the capsule Again, we want to give a smooth ride to the crew as they are coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. Right. Now, the parachutes are located behind a door that's at the bottom of the capsule. It's below the crew hatch. So Dragon commands the door to release, and as you saw in the video, the drug parachutes pull the door away, and that pulls the four main parachutes out. Now, these are the new Mark III parachutes. We've completed here at SpaceX over 80 tests of that parachute system including 10 multi-parachute tests of this particular upgraded parachute design over the last few months to demonstrate that the design is ready for flight. And we are about, we're just inside two minutes of when we expect to see a splashdown. The recovery teams are already out there in the Atlantic Ocean standing by, uh, ready with fast bo boats to begin their initial approach to Dragon. Again, we mentioned this before, uh, but the recovery operation, we expect to take a couple of hours I've heard a call out, we're below 500 meters. And we expect when Dragon splashes down, it's going to be roughly 32 kilometers offshore. Again, we're looking at a live view. So far, uh, all things have appeared to go nominal for this test. All things looking great so far. We saw the four main parachutes deploy. You're looking at them now. Uh, fully open, and we are coming up on about a minute until splashdown. I think we may have heard a call out of 100 meters to go. Yeah, I just heard that too. Yeah.
Uh, those four parachutes are actually going to be released from the capsule after splashdown, and they'll be recovered too. And we are down. Down a little bit early, in fact. And there you can see the recovery boat beginning to approach instantly. I'm going to try to talk a little bit louder so you can hear me over the folks here. Uh, this has been a really exciting thing to see because uh, we had the weather. We weren't really sure if the weather was going to cooperate. Um, we were trying to weigh, you know, is it favorable for launch, but also is it favorable for recovery because they really have to watch the height of those waves um, in order to do this operation. Um, that, that fast boat is, is just off screen now, but there's four fast boats out there in the area to begin, again, that initial approach to Dragon. Um, the recovery operation from here takes about two hours, but all in all, this looks like a really great test. Yeah, a lot of fun watching the Dragon come down. We had great views from the onboard camera in particular. Now I think this camera is from our GO searcher recovery ship, which is also the tender for the fast boat. You saw one of them headed out there. And you can also see it looks still a little choppy, so you understand we were kind of on the edge of the weather conditions out in the splashdown area. But they assessed the, uh, the boat data, the buoy data, looked at the forecast and said we were GO. And while we took two and a half hours to get here, we finally got here and it was great. And that's the summary for today. It looks like right now a great test. Visually, everything happened. Falcon 9, you saw the liftoff. We had kind of a long view from the uh, camera. Dragon did shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines and separate. We did see the flash as the Falcon 9 uh, came apart, as predicted, no surprise there. Dragon, we saw a great view as it got to Apogee. It deployed the trunk, separating it, reoriented. Then the drogue chutes came out, the main chutes came out, and then we just waited for that nice soft splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. And we saw, and it looks like we just lost the view um, from out there on the ship, but you couldn't really see much from that particular angle. Um, again, that recovery operation is going to take a couple of hours, so we're not going to stay on the air for the duration of that. Um, but we are going to be back for a news conference um, coming up at 11.30 Eastern time this morning. That would be, let me do the math real quick, 8.30 uh, Pacific time. We're going to hear from NASA and SpaceX leaders about their initial thoughts on this test that you just saw. Of course, everything looked fantastic, but there's going to be a lot of data to dig into. They're going to also collect those parachutes, get a lot of data from that, and then um, see what the next steps are on the path to Demo 2, when, of course, we're going to be launching NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. So stay tuned for that news conference. It will be carried live on NASA TV. If you're watching on the web, just tune to uh, nasa.gov forward slash live so you can see that coverage. Again, that's 8.30 Pacific time, 11.30 Eastern. Thanks so much for joining us for this morning's test.